half term holidays. Today is Valentine's Day and in the week we've got Pancake Day coming up and the start of Lent. So many things to celebrate. I hope you're going to mark at least one of those things at some point this week. This week in CYP at Home, we are thinking about the parable of the unforgiving servant. That'll be interesting to learn about, won't it? We'll have a chat from Kat, a reflection activity, and me and Malcolm are doing a challenge. But first, we're going to go over to Claude for our Bible reading. Good morning, everybody. It's Claude here. Hello. How are you today? Now, before we start the Bible study, do you remember last week I introduced my new friend? Well, Dino said he wouldn't be that shy this week and he'd be able to say something. So, Dino, whenever you're ready. Dino, it's your turn to say something now. Right, well, I'm going to have to get on with the story and, and hopefully you'll say something at some point, okay? Okay. 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 This week's story is called The Unforgiving Servant. Peter asked a question. If somebody hurts me, he said, then he says, I'm really sorry. How many times should I forgive them and say, hey, it's okay? Before Jesus could answer, however, Peter offered an answer of his own. He thought it would sound good, he thought it would sound big-hearted, and he thought it was the kind of thing that Jesus would like to hear. Should I forgive him, say, um, seven times, he said? It seemed like a lot to Peter, but Jesus was not impressed. No, Jesus answered. Not seven times, but seventy times seven times. Peter did some quick sums. Hmm. That's a lot of times. A whole lot of times. More times than Peter had ever forgiven anyone. So Jesus told him a story. Once there was a king, and one of his servants owed him money. Not a little money, no. Lots of money. Loads and loads and loads of money. Millions and millions and more. One day, the servant was brought before the king. And because he could not pay what he owed, the king commanded that the man and his family should be sold as slaves. The servant fell on his knees and said, I'm really sorry, he cried. Be patient with me, please. Just give me another chance. I promise I will pay you back everything I owe. The king looked at his servant and felt really sorry for him. And then, much to the servant's surprise, he said, Hey, that's okay. Then he called off the debt and set him free. Now, the servant left the palace, celebrating. Woo! And then he ran into another servant, a servant that owed him money. Not lots of money. Not a lot of money either. A couple of coins, that's all. Did the first servant remember what the king had done for him? Not for a minute. He grabbed the second servant by the throat and demanded to be paid. So the second servant fell on his knees. He said, I'm really sorry and be patient with me. Give me a chance, another chance, and I will pay back everything I owe. In the Bible, Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. We've got a really simple pattern that we follow when we pray. We think about saying thank you, sorry, and please. I'm going to say a prayer that's got each of those things in, but maybe you want to say one that's got some different things, or you want to add to my prayer. That's great too. When you finish your prayer, and when I finish my prayer, maybe you could say a nice amen, okay? Dear God, thank you for Valentine's Day and a chance to think about love and your love for each of us. Sorry for the things that we've done that aren't your best for us. 
especially when we should know better. Please help us to show your love and our love to our families and friends during half term in the way we speak and in the way we act. Amen. Hey folks, I hope you're all well. Welcome to this week's Chat with Kat and we're thinking about a story that's all to do with forgiveness. You see, Peter asked Jesus, Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone who hurts me? And he thought about it and thought, what might be a, a, a nice thing? How many times sounds generous? Maybe, maybe seven times would be good to forgive someone. What do you think, Jesus, seven times? Jesus says, no, seven times 70. Does anyone know that maths? That's a lot, isn't it? It is 490. That's a much bigger number, isn't it, than seven? Do you know what? Jesus wasn't even saying that we should forgive 490 times. What he was really saying is that we should always forgive. That's a really big thing, isn't it? To always forgive someone. How can we do something so loving, so generous? Well, Jesus tells a story to help us understand that it's because God is so loving and so generous to us. You see, in the story, there is a servant who owes the king a huge amount of money, millions. And he goes to the king and he says, I'm so sorry, I can't pay it back. And the king is going to sell his family as slaves. And he says, no, please, please, please. I'm so sorry. Let me try and pay the money back. And the king shows him mercy. He says, okay, I'm gonna forgive you everything. Your debt is cleared. And on his way home, the servant bumps into a friend who owes him just a little bit of money. What he should have done was say to this friend, it's okay, your debt is cleared, I forgive you. But he doesn't, does he? What does he do? He sends him to jail for this little amount of money. He's just been forgiven a huge amount. But he couldn't let go of this little bit. And when the king finds out, he's really mad and he throws the servant in jail until he can pay back that huge amount of money. What Jesus is trying to say in this story is that God has forgiven us a huge amount. If you were just to close your eyes for a second and maybe remember the last day and the last week, how many things have you done wrong in that week? There's maybe some of, you can think of some of the things that you've done. Maybe you pushed a sibling when you shouldn't. There's the things that you've said. Maybe you were unkind in your words. And there's even the stuff that you thought that no one else knows about. When we say sorry to God for those things, he forgives us time and time again. He forgives us a huge amount. He forgives us always. And he says that we should do the same for other people. We should always forgive them. Now, forgiveness can sometimes be hard. Forgiveness can be a bit tricky. When we forgive someone, we're not saying that the thing that they did against us was okay. And we're not saying that it's all right and that it's a good thing that they did. That's not what forgiveness means. Forgiveness is about letting go of what has been done to us. It's about putting it in the past and moving on. It's about choosing to give someone a second chance. And that can be a tricky thing to do, can't it? If someone's hurt us, it can be hard to forgive them. But if we remember how much God forgives us, and that can help. Do you know what else can really help? Is talking to God about it. We can tell God exactly how we feel. We can be really honest with Him. And we can ask for His help 
to be able to forgive others. Now, why don't we try this week then to thank God for the times that he's forgiven us and to ask him to help us forgive other people. You see, if we're going to be on Jesus' team, if we're a Christian, then it's really important that we forgive. It's all about, it's what it is to be on Jesus' team. We need to be able to forgive other people. And Jesus says, if we're not willing to, if we're going to cross our arms and not even try to forgive, then we've not really understood how much God has forgiven us. So maybe that's something to be thinking about this week. Okay, I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Okay, so this week the parable we're thinking about is the unforgiving servant. Now, I don't know much about servants, but I do connect a little bit on the boxes, and sometimes they have trays with glasses on. So I thought that we could do a challenge involving trays with glasses on. And just to make it a little bit trickier, we've stacked the glasses up in that one. Not where this glass goes around right there. Okay, just so you know it's trickier, we've stacked them a little bit. And we're going to see who can stand the longest on one leg with the tray on one hand. Okay, so on the go. Three, two, one, go. In our story this week, we've been learning about forgiveness, about how God forgives us, and about how important it is for us to forgive other people. In the Bible, it tells us that when we are forgiven, then it's as if our sin never happened. It's all washed away, wiped clean, as if it was never there. We're going to think about that with our reflection using some sand or salt and a tray. It's a really nice simple one, but it's a great way to help us to say sorry to God for the things that we've done that aren't his best for us. And it's also a really helpful way of thinking about forgiving others. So what we're going to do is we're going to write in the sand and we're going to say sorry to God for things that we need to say sorry for. And then we can watch those things disappear by shaking the tray and it's all gone as if it was never there. Maybe you want to take some time to think about those things that you need to say sorry to God for and you need to write some things in the sand and shake the tray and see them disappear as if they were never there. This is also a really helpful way of thinking about forgiving other people. Maybe if they've hurt you or upset you or done something that was unkind. Maybe you need to ask God to help you to forgive them. And maybe you could do that by writing in the sand. You could write, I forgive. And then whatever it is that you need to forgive. And you can ask God to help you. And as you do that, you can shake the sand and think about the fact that you've forgiven them. Now that doesn't mean that those things didn't hurt us or upset us, but it means that we've given them to God 
that we've trusted God with them and that he's helped us to forgive those people. Now, you might not have a tray at home or any sand or salt to use. Another great way of doing this is with a plastic wallet and I've just put some green paper inside to make it easier for me to see but you don't have to put anything inside or you can put a piece of white paper or whatever you've got available and then you'll need a felt tip or I've got a dry wipe pen and you'll need something to wipe it with so I've got some blue cloth but also on the end of my pen is a little felt rubber both of those work really well and you can take the time with your pretend whiteboard to write on it and say sorry to God and maybe you can write things on it that you want to say sorry for and then you get your wiper out and you can wipe those things away and look it's like they were never there and you can do the same with forgiving other people you can write I forgive and then you can wipe those things out to represent you forgiving the people that might have hurt or upset you I hope you're gonna find these activities helpful this week I hope they're gonna help you to think about forgiveness about how amazing it is that God forgives us and how that can help us in turn to forgive other people. I hope you've learned lots about forgiveness today. I hope you've learned about how much God has forgiven us and how important it is for us to forgive. Now it's half term and if you're short of things to do, you might want to check out Emily's extra activities. You can find a link for them on the CYP homepage of the St Mary's website. There's loads to do there and I'm sure you'll find something that's fun for you. We'll see you next week and until then, have a lovely afternoon. Bye!